Hi everybody, it's Elder Janae here, and it is week seven of our Bible study, Fit for Life, The Power of Spiritual Disciplines. I hope that you have been enjoying the classes so far. If you miss any, please catch up. We have them all here on YouTube for you to be able to see the lesson as well as engage in the conversation afterwards. And so I'm excited to get into this lesson, but you know, we gotta start with prayer. So pray with me. Lord, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for your word that leads and guides us into all truth. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would make us good ground for your or to take root and spring up and bear much fruit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This week, I get to talk about the spiritual discipline of serving. And so when you think of serving, it's not a discipline with a lot of natural appeal, right? Most of the other disciplines are far more interesting and maybe if you're looking with the wrong eyes a little bit more glamorous right uh, fasting has this idea of some spiritual depth because of the denial aspect everybody wants to know their word right and so christians appeal to the discipline of bible study so that they can deepen their interest their understanding and people universally practice prayer, right? It's people who are non-Christians, people who are Christians, a lot of them engage in prayer, right? And so when we think of some of these disciplines, serving is not one of the ones that are at the top of our list, right? It can sound mundane, pedestrian, or even demeaning. But I wanna insert Matthew 20 and 28. The son of man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The scripture doesn't say that Jesus came to teach. It does not say that he came to heal. It does not say that he came to feed the masses. It says that Jesus came to serve. And the beauty in Jesus' service that I think we can pick up on is the fact that those things that he did, the healing, the delivering, the feeding of the masses, those all were acts of service. Everything that Jesus did, every time he showed up, he came to meet a need, he came to serve. And so what does that mean for us as modern day believers? What does that mean for us, those of us who are looking to deepen our life with the power of the spiritual disciplines, right? God works through the gospel of Jesus in part to make people like Jesus. As Jesus came not to be served, but instead had the heart of a servant, so those who believe the gospel of Jesus are given Christ-like hearts of servants. And so before we go any further, I wanna give you something to work with. I wanna give you our definition for the spiritual discipline of serving. The spiritual discipline of serving is the willful laying down of one's time, talent, and treasure for the benefit of another by the grace given to us from Christ Jesus. Service denies self and gives freely out of the altruistic goodness that God has placed in our hearts by his presence. And so we're gonna get into what service does for others. Of course, we know that when we serve, we are meeting a need. But I wanna talk about first what service and serving does for us. If one part of the definition talks about this idea of denying ourselves and preferring others, one of the first benefits to making service a discipline is giving us the opportunity to pursue humility. And I mean really pursue humility. Philippians 2 and 3 says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. And so in a world where we are more likely to be self-preserving, where we are told to look out for ourselves and our needs and our wants before anyone and anything else, we have to be intentional about being humble. Humility is not something that is chasing us down. Humility is not something that's knocking on our door. We have to literally, intentionally put ourselves in the way of humility. And serving is one of the ways that we do that. When we meet somebody else's need, when we care for what's bothering them, when we have an answer for their questions, when we become a solution to their problem, we are literally putting ourselves in the way of being able to humble ourselves and be an answer. Because when we serve, we are reminded that it's not about us, it's about the people, and it's about others in Jesus Christ. Another benefit to engaging in the spiritual discipline of service is we get to oppose the need to be seen. 
that's a tough one. We get to oppose the need to be seen, right? The spiritual discipline of serving is choosing to do something for someone else without expecting anything else in return. You're not expecting someone to give something to you. You're not expecting reciprocity. You're not expecting to get something back. You're not even expecting to be seen. That's the true essence of serving as a discipline. When we serve for the sole purpose of getting attention or recognition or fame or clout, the real condition of our heart is seen. If we are offended when people don't say thank you, if we are troubled when no one pats us on the back, if we are sad when our work goes unnoticed and we're not publicly acknowledged, then we need to check our hearts and the reason why we are serving. Jesus put it this way in Matthew 6, 1 through 4. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. In this passage of scripture, Jesus is specifically speaking to the people that he's teaching, and he's telling them not to do good works in order to be seen, uh, because that's what the hypocrites do, right? That's what people who are looking to be seen do. And so there is a parallel here, not just in uh, doing the right thing, but in serving, right? We should not just do it to be seen. We should not just do it for the recognition. And if we do, that is our reward. Your one thank you from your coworker is your reward. Your great job from your pastor is your reward. Your I love the way you do that from your sister or brother, that's your reward. But when we do these things from our heart, from a place of really wanting to be disciples of Christ, there's a reward for us that people cannot give us. And so I want to bring this up, right? Because Jesus did say in scripture, right? Uh, Let your light so shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your father who is in heaven. That's Matthew 5 and 16, right? And so he does tell us at one point to let people see our good works. But Christians are to be seen doing good works. They must not simply do works to be seen. I'm going to say that again. Christians are to be seen doing good works, but they must not do good works simply to be seen. And so pe people should be able to say that we live a life that pleases God. We live a life of service, but that's not the only reason why we do it. We do it because there is a reward for us in heaven and because we've been called to the work of serving. I want you to think about this and I want you to put this in the chat. Um, and you can use sentences, but I kind of want you to use uh, one word, one or two word answers, right? I want you to think about your ideal interaction with someone in customer service. I'm sure we've all had terrible experiences with customer service, which has showed us what we want in customer service, right? So think about your ideal interaction with someone in customer service. How would you like them to treat you? I'm going to give you some time to answer that in the chat. Thinking about your ideal interaction with someone in customer service, how would you like them to treat you? As you're answering, I'll, I'll throw out some things there for you. You probably want someone who is kind. You probably want someone who is attentive, knowledgeable in whatever area they're serving you in, right? And someone just overall who is pleasant to be around. Nobody wants to get service from someone who is just simply unpleasant. And so I would say for me, the number one thing that I'd like to have when that I'm looking for during a customer service interaction is for someone to actually be happy about what they're doing, right? Um, I want to feel welcomed. I want to feel like because I'm here, because I am utilizing this service, that I'm valued. And I want someone to entreat me that way with how they talk to me, how they handle me, even how they handle the people around me. I want it to be seen that the people who come here are valued. And so serving spiritually is very similar. It's not just about what we do. It's about how we do it. 
In the New Testament, the original word for the word serve, whenever you see that generally in scripture, the original word there is the word diakonau, diakonau. And if it sounds familiar, it's where we get the word deacon uh, for those who serve in that office in the church. It's where we get the word deacon. And so the translated definition of that word is to wait at a table. And so whenever you see the word serve generally in the New Testament, the person being referenced or the people being referenced are those who wait at a table. And so that should really put into perspective the way in which we serve people. Think about it. I, I think about this about this often uh, because as I get older, I am a review queen, right? If I get service bad enough from an establishment, I will never use that establishment again. Um, it could be a chain restaurant, but if I go to one restaurant that is not good, I will never use that restaurant again. If I have a brand that I'm familiar with and it's defective for a long period of time, I will never use it again, right? And so I wonder, how many people have never tried Christ again because of bad service? I wonder how many people have walked away from the church, from the body of Christ, because they encountered one bad Christian. And that sounds heavy and it should sound heavy. It should feel heavy. We should feel the weight of that. When we serve, we are not just representing ourselves. We're not even just representing the church that we go to. We are representing Christ. And so every time we show up to serve, Every time we show up to do the will of the Father, we should leave complaints at home. We should leave our frustrations at the door. And we should show up with the heart of a servant, ready to do the will of the Lord. Colossians 3, 23 through 24 says, Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. It's really the, that last phrase for me. You are serving the Lord Christ. As much as we're serving other people, we're really serving the Lord. And I love this scripture because every single area is covered here. It says whatever you do, whether you are a stay at home mom, whether you are at work, whether you are a preacher, whether you are a greeter at the door, no matter what you do, whatever you do. Do it as unto the Lord, because you are serving the Lord Christ. So now that we have a little bit of a foundation, a working definition and all that for serving, I want to talk about Jesus' example of serving because he is the perfect example of all things righteous. Right. And so I want to go into a little bit of what he did. Um, and so let's go to John 13, three through five and see Jesus putting service on display. John 13, three through five says, Jesus, knowing that the father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. And so I could just go straight to the meaning of the scripture, but I wouldn't be a good teacher if I painted some background and color this in uh, a little bit in terms of context with this chapter. And so it is before the feast of the Passover meal, Jesus was about to share this time and this meal with his disciples. And so if you read John chapter 13, which I encourage you to do, uh, verse one says that Jesus had known at this point that his hour had come. And so we think about the life of Jesus. Jesus anticipated this hour. And when it talks about this hour, it's talking about Calvary, right? Jesus anticipated this hour. And so scripture often makes reference to Jesus saying, knowing that his time had not come, knowing that it wasn't his hour. He often made reference to this hour. And so that being mentioned so many times, we finally get to the hour that has come. And so over that time, Jesus had enjoyed a unique protection because he wasn't susceptible to being uh, put to Calvary at that time. There was a special protection that was around him. But now that time was up. The clock was literally winding down. And so we're told that Jesus knew uh, that he had come from God and he knew that he was going back to God. And it also talks about how he sees the moment when Satan enters into Judas to betray him. 
And from this space, knowing that he was about to go to Calvary, knowing that one of his disciples was about to betray him, this is the moment that he chooses to wash the disciples' feet. I can't tell you what I would do the night before Calvary or a few hours before, but I don't think I would be washing anybody's feet. But this is the perfect and the truest depiction of a servant. It doesn't get any better than this. There is no better example of serving from the right space than Jesus's actions. When life gets hard, it's easy for us to recoil. It's easy for us to withdraw. It's easy for us to put aside the things that we committed to serving but Jesus shows us that it's not only possible, it's necessary to serve when life gets hard. It's necessary to serve when we're not facing the perfect scenario. And most people, right, they tell us that uh, when we serve others, you know, it's the, it's the perfect way to, to take our mind off of our troubles, right? But serving in that way uh, can be escapism, right? But true service really is tapping into the heart of God and making your problems smaller than they really are. And so Jesus, he washes the disciples' feet. Uh, he comes to serve them. He shows them the perfect example of what servanthood is, that it's not about what you're feeling. It's not about what's going on around you. It's not even about what's going on in the heart of the people that you're serving. It's about the commitment that you made in the will of God to show his goodness to show his love, to show his kindness to those around us by being a servant, no matter what we are facing. And so serving spiritually, right, is not just doing things, right? It's what the scripture talks about, right? Bearing one another's burdens and fulfilling the law of Christ. It's serving people as if we are serving the Lord because we are. It's what Paul talked about in 2 Corinthians 1 and 11, that while he was suffering, Paul says that he wants many to join in praying for him so that as God sustains him, God will get more glory. Our service is about giving God glory. Our service will squeeze something out of us, something that we didn't expect, especially when we're at our lowest point. We can be led to do things that we would never do in our wildest dreams and we trust God for the outcome of how we serve. We find this in 1 Kings 17, right, with the widow and Elijah who is making herself a little cake uh, so that she can die, right? Um, and so Elijah tells her, bring me a little something, do this for me. And she does it, right? And as she does it, she receives a miracle, right? Uh, she was able to have her jugs filled with flour and oil, and it didn't go empty according to the word that the Lord had spoken, right? And so because she served the prophet, she received something, she received a miracle that she would not have received otherwise, right? Her service unlocked a miracle for her, and one of the reasons why the enemy fights us in the area of service is because he does want us to be prideful and not humble. He does want us to feed our ego by wanting to be seen. But he also knows that we get something when we serve. Even though we're not looking for a reciprocity, there is something that comes that we gain from being able to serve other people. Serving others while we are challenged really gives God the glory and it gives us an opportunity to give from a place that we didn't think we had. I want to talk about serving in a way that is important to believers in a more communal way, uh, particularly those who belong to a local church. I want to talk about what that looks like as we're serving. It is amazing. It's great to serve other people that are uh, of different religions or different faiths or may not belong to, to the kingdom of God. Uh, but the scripture teaches us that we are to serve other believers, and that is very important. Galatians 6 and 10 says, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone and especially to those who are of the household of faith. We see this in other scriptures throughout the Bible. Some of them are not as well known, right? And so we find that in Luke chapter 8, verses 3, where we find Joanna and Susanna, two people that are not really talked about, but it says that they provided for the Lord out of their own substance. Phoebe was a servant in the church, and she was a helper of many people, in, particularly, in particular the Apostle Paul. 
And this is a really great story. Epaphroditus, he faithfully delivered a gift from the Philippian church to Paul while Paul was in on house arrest in Rome. And so Epaphroditus really had a heart of a servant. Uh, the Bible talks about how Epaphroditus uh, ends up getting ill and he's not able to do the service the way that he did before, but he gets well, right? And he's granted good health. And so as he goes back to the Philippian church, he actually brings with him the book of Philippians that we read now. He brings this letter from Paul to the church. And Paul writes beautifully about Epaphroditus's uh, service. He says, I have thought it necessary to send you Epaphroditus, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier and your messenger and minister to my need. For he has been longing for you all and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. Indeed, he was ill near to death, but God had mercy on him. And not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I am the more eager to send him, therefore, that you may rejoice at seeing him again and that I may be less anxious. So receive him in the Lord with all joy and honor such men, for he nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was lacking in your service to me. And that is is serving. And what's so amazing about this is Epaphroditus did not have to speak of his own service. He did not have to tell the Philippian church, I almost died bringing y'all this gift. The apostle Paul spoke on it for him. The apostle Paul saw the heart of the servant was able to commend him for his service. And he didn't call him a servant. He called him a fellow worker, a fellow soldier. And so we see that our service is not small. Our service is not menial. But when we engage in true service, we become fellow workers. We become fellow soldiers in Christ. One thing I didn't talk about here as we conclude um, is that there is a difference between the spiritual gift of serving and the spiritual discipline of service. Not all believers experience service as a gift. A spiritual gift is bestowed by the Holy Spirit at conversion. Spiritual gifts are given to believers by God to draw others to Christ. Although placed within a believer, spiritual gift gifts are actually intended for the benefit of the church through the vessel of a believer. In other words, your spiritual gifts are not God's gift to you, but to the church. In contrast, every believer can, and I would argue they should, experience service as a spiritual discipline. We've talked about spiritual di disciplines, right? And they are practices that with the Holy Spirit's help works at developing us in order to grow spiritually and become more Christ-like. Spiritual disciplines move believers further up and further into our relationship with Christ and his people. And so although our service is directed outward to enrich others, the real benefits of a spiritual discipline of service belong to, be to the believers who practice it. The discipline of serving is not God's gift to the world, but it is a gift to you. Any believer can serve. I want to say that again in case you thought I was talking about this gift of serving. This is the spiritual discipline. Any believer can serve. And every believer should serve. And so you may not be a singer. You may not be a writer, a teacher, a deacon, a greeter. You may not have a title, but that's the beauty of being a servant. That is your title, a servant. And so here's the truth that I want to leave you with. Scripture encourages us in Psalm 102 to serve the Lord with gladness. And we probably understand the part about serving the Lord. I think we all know that we've made a commitment to him that we should stick with. But one of the ways that we serve God is by serving his people and serving them well. And so when we serve the Lord with gladness, we serve his people with gladness as well. When we do this, we put the amazing love of God on display. We do what 1 Peter 4 and 10 tells us, that we should use our gifts not to become famous not to be known, not to be loved, but to serve. That amazing gift of prophecy, teaching, all of those things that God has given us, those gifts were given to us that we would serve.
So I'm challenging you to be intentional about serving, whether you serve in a formal capacity in your local church, whether you are serving your community, however you find yourself in the space of serving, tap into the goodness of God and the heart of God to show up and serve like you've been saved. Prefer someone else, give them the gospel, show them the love of Christ through serving. I want you to stick around for our conversation. We get to be joined by our director of media, Tamika Jackson, of course, the AD of Christian Education, Brianna Kimball. We're gonna take this a little bit further, but I pray that you tap into serving, not next week, not tomorrow, but right now you find a way to serve. I love y'all and I'll see you in the conversation. I hope that you all enjoyed that lesson on serving. Um, I hope that you were active in the chat and that you really were able to pick up some things about the spiritual discipline of serving. And so, you know what time it is. It is time for us to have a conversation about the spiritual discipline and talk a little bit about what happened in our lesson and just give our take on all things serving. And so, of course, you know, Miss Brianna Kimball, the AD, but now you get to see Miss Tamika Jackson. And I mean, if you know, you know, she's usually on the other side of the camera and so we don't get to hear from her much but we're excited that she said yes to this um, and the reason why you know Brianna and I try to be very intentional about the people that we choose to be on here um, and we just felt like Tamika is like the example of what servant hood is and servant leadership is and so we wanted you to be on so we could share some of that goodness uh with the folks online and those who will watch later so uh i'm gonna jump right into my questions my first question is and i'll start with you brianna what is your definition of serving as a spiritual discipline uh, okay this is gonna be very short and simple but i would say that serving is taking the heart of god and putting action to it as, mm. a as a discipline, I would say that it's taking the heart of God, putting action to it, and adding intentionality mm. as mm -hmm. well. So that's what I said. Very short, but. Mm. Would you add I anything? Know. Very short. Take um, away. I, honestly, I would agree. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would agree. I don't want to, um, I don't, I feel like there's nothing to add to that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm so sure. it's, yeah. it's literally the perfect answer. It. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. definitely would agree with that. And I think, as we've talked about with all of the disciplines, like there is a consistency yeah. aspect mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know we talk about that, but that doesn't mean, right, like you're serving every single day of every single minute, right? Like what mm -hmm. Tamika does is a little bit different, right? Because she literally does this every single day. Um, but really. if you are not doing consistency, we should be always looking for opportunities Absolutely. to serve people mm -hmm. yeah. um, and to show them the heart of God, similar to what Brianna said. Um, and I think we also have to talk about the element of selflessness that's involved yeah. mm -hmm. in serving. Uh, because you really have to put the needs of others right. before yourself consistently. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so there is this aspect of like humility, right? Forsaking pride and not thinking about, you know, man, I could really be asleep right now. Or, oh my gosh, I got to do something else. Or, mm -hmm. right? Or maybe I could be giving my money to something else, right? Mm -hmm. um, when you serve, you really, you can consider those things, but you put those on the back burner to really accomplish like God's mission and his will. Yeah. I would also add, mm -hmm. oh, go ahead, cause go. Well, it was what you actually said made me think about um, sacrifice, mm -hmm. like legit sacrifice, like yeah. that actually being the discipline of it, um, yeah. cause it is not thinking of yourself in, in mm -hmm. that sense. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. In combination to when you were speaking Elder Sinead, I thought about um, like just reciprocation mm. and that it's not quite that, like when you're serving, you kind of take that aspect away. You're not yeah. looking for anything back. Mm -hmm. The only thing you're looking for is just the benefit of someone else. So like, yeah. that's the priority, not that you're serving just so you can, yeah. but you're serving so that other people can be, can benefit from you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. actually I'm glad that you asked that question because I want to get into it. I think we can, I don't say over-spiritualized because that's not it. I think we can make this so spiritual, especially particularly with this discipline um, that we miss the practical parts of it. And so some of the things that we could struggle with, with it being so practical, right? So have you ever, and Tamika, I'll give this to you first. Mm -hmm. Have you ever struggled to serve when you didn't get acknowledged? Mm -hmm. If not, how did you keep, how do you keep yourself from that? If so, how did you get out of it, right? Because I think when you're talking about re yeah. re reciprocity, that's a hard word for mm -hmm. me, reciprocity, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. a lot of that is like acknowledgement mm -hmm. and thank you and mm -hmm. I see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and some people tap out of serving if they don't get that. So how do you, if, you deal, if you've dealt with that in the past, how'd you get out of it? If you don't, mm -hmm. how do you keep yourself from that? Hmm. 
I think I did mm -hmm. um, in the past, and um, how did I get out of it? I think I had to like literally, um, I had to question my own motive mm -hmm. on like why mm -hmm. I was doing yes. it. Yes. Um, yeah. Because a lot of it was just like, but I did, you know, yes. I, what I saw myself mm -hmm. doing was like, yeah. I did this, yes. I did that, <laughs> I stayed, I was like, how could you, you know, like, are you serious? You know, so <laughs> literally how I, how I actually feel because yeah. it's like you know. But I think when yeah. I when I questioned that is yeah. when I was like, oh, okay, like yeah. I'm not doing this from the right space. Mm -hmm. So I needed to like shift the, my why yeah. I was serving, like, that's um, so good. and that's yeah. how I got out of it. And I think now I'm just like, no, I literally will do things because I want to do them yes. not because I'm looking for something out of it. Yeah, that's yeah. so good. I love that. I love yeah. that. I literally was going to say the same thing. Yeah. Um, I used to struggle a lot more with it, but with, again, prayer, just self-evaluation, like, Brianna, why are you doing this? Like, mm -hmm. are you doing it for approval? Are you doing it because you feel like you have to earn something? Because that was a thing. Yes. Um, especially mm -hmm. with, you know, in the body of Christ. Like, I'm going to work and I'm going to serve because, quote, unquote, you know, and it's easy to get into that whole spirit of religion. Yeah. But for me, and sometimes it, it still is a thing, right? Get, like, hello? Do, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, doing things and, like, okay, like, I didn't get a thank you. Yeah. Or I did all of this stuff and I guess maybe the reaction wasn't what I thought it was yeah. but I think in those moments like I just pause mm -hmm. and right like yeah. and it sounds again not no. to over spiritualize yeah. it but just like Brandon why are you doing this yeah. remember if nobody sees it nobody applauds you nobody yeah. approves like God sees it like yeah. I think that's the heart of serving I agree I agree no go Ooh, okay because this made me think about like I feel like I was never triggered until a correction came Mm, interesting. It lived, okay. that made me think about that because yeah. I was like, hold on, like I, it didn't, my, uh, mm. yeah, my thing to it, like has, didn't come up until like there was a correction on something that I needed to do better. Mm -hmm. And that's when it comes like, hold on. Mm. How, what do I you mean I can do this better? Yeah. You didn't thank me for the last thing I did and I can do better than this. Like, okay, yeah. That, it literally made me think voices. about that. <laughs> That's so funny to me. The voice is so funny to me. It happens. But I actually would agree with that. Yeah. I, I I didn't think about that, but I, I think I would I would say that for my oh my gosh, that is so good. Like I think I like when you said that you still struggle with it. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll be honest, I still sometimes oh, okay. you know that thing creep up on you. Yeah, um, you know if you don't you know buying a strong sure. man, it'll it'll creep up. <laughs> um, and I also realize with correction that's true, but also with burnout. Um, mm -hmm. I'm more prone to to do th to like realize like man they didn't say thank you or do they yeah. appreciate what I'm doing like yeah. if mm -hmm. I'm like but the burnout is my fault like I'm not gonna put that on the workload I'm gonna put that on not praying mm -hmm. not being like consistent with my why and intentional I think mm -hmm. we could easily blame burnout on the things that we are supposed to do or have mm -hmm. signed up to do and right. I'm not gonna do that right. um, I see my burnout as not checking in with the Lord maybe not checking in with people to just be a person sometimes you just gotta enjoy the company yeah. of people mm -hmm. um, like fellowship which we'll, we'll talk about as well um, just all those things that that build me up in, in, in the spirit um, and I can just get so focused on doing and then not seeing the the thank right. you and that kind of like ooh ruins my day um so that's good i'm really i'm really enjoying this conversation so i feel like brianna you said something about this um about like keep like doing things right um and consistently doing them um an aspect of serving of course involves doing right like it's it's not really serving if you're not doing anything um so how can we or how do you i'll say how do you keep uh serving but not make it busy like how do you know the difference between busy work um, and actually serving because I think we can get caught up in like looking like we're doing stuff mm -hmm. and it's like you just shuffling them papers around like you didn't really right. do anything um, so how do we keep and separate busyness from actual service okay that's loaded I would say it's twofold the first thing that came to me was um, just the threat of making something an idol mm -hmm. um, I find that a lot of times when you don't know why you're doing something mm -hmm. or again your heart is you know hasn't fully been transformed or again that yeah. whole why your motive thing mm -hmm. that in order to validate your self or who you are in the kingdom mm -hmm. it's easy to start just working yeah like it's easy to idolize work mm. because business gives me a sense of mm -hmm. identity a sense of importance yeah um so i think that that's one thing. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that 
I don't know. I think there's a, a aspect of like self-correcting that's mm -hmm. needed, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, and just are you avoiding something? I, and I, and mm. I'll keep saying like self-assessment, self. Yeah. Because sometimes this is an internal thing. Mm -hmm. um, others may not always catch it, but it's something that you know. Yeah. And I think that oftentimes like work, that's what leads to burnout. When you're doing something in your own strength, when mm -hmm. you're doing something, trying to conjure up yeah. whatever it is, yeah. um, that's when you get to, you know, when you burn out. So I would say... How do you, repeat the question, how do I? How do you distinguish being busy from actual serving? Like just being busy, like just doing stuff to do stuff? I would look maybe the, the effectiveness of it. Mm -hmm. um, like in my serving, what, I don't say what is the point, cause that sounds like, mm -hmm. but what is the point of me doing this? Yeah. Am I doing this to pass time? Am I doing this because I know that others will benefit from it? Am mm -hmm. I doing this because there is, there is a need that I'm trying to meet? You know, yeah. I think it takes a level of honesty um, with yourself and yeah. that's how I kind of stay out of it like mm -hmm. if I'm just doing stuff and I'm tired and I at the end of the day I don't see no fruit there's yeah. and I'm not saying okay because that's tricky right like not all the time do you see the fruit immediately mm -hmm. of what you do right but if I notice over a long period of time I'm in this like almost like a, a rut yeah like I'm just doing I'm just mm -hmm. going through the motions yeah so for like a better word yeah um, then I know okay Brianna like yeah, you busy. Sit down. You yeah. <laughs> no, that's it. That. I would say for me and Timmy, you can go um, after if you have anything. I would say, I think that the way I don't think I've really ever struggled with being busy because hello, I don't need to pretend to do anything. <laughs> I'd rather not. Um, I think, I think when people are looking to be seen, mm -hmm. that's when it gets a little busy, you know? Um, you start picking up extra things, and I think it's, uh, again, like the question that we talked about, um, of that thank you, right? Like, if I do more, will they say thank you more mm -hmm. to this? If mm -hmm. I'm seen more, will people see my gifts yeah. more? Will, will I just, you know, be in a way where people can see me? Um, and I think it's also a distraction, right? Like, I think busyness is a way that we keep ourselves from being still and really hearing from God. Um, and so I think people can swap busyness for and say that they're serving, right, if they have not really tapped into um, the heart of God and seeing, like, why they're doing what they're doing. Um, and if it's actually, like you said, if it's effective, if it's building them up, if it's edifying the body, if it's serving somebody else um, in that way. Did you have anything for that? Yeah, I actually did. Um, I wrote some stuff down because I didn't want to forget oh, it. Yeah. Um, but I think it's funny that you say that, like, um, some people like do it for like the attention. I mm -hmm. feel like I've kind of been that person that's like the opposite, mm -hmm. where I'm just like, I don't want to get it wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's mm -hmm. like I will become busy because mm -hmm. I don't want to get it wrong so much, mm -hmm. you know, or don't want to disappoint. Um, so I feel like my how I am able to distinguish it now is I. I can tell or discern when I'm when something is being when I'm being like fearful of something mm -hmm. and when I'm trying to like avoid or even avoid what I know mm -hmm. the Lord has told me to do. Mm -hmm. So it's like if if my assign, assignment was hey like oversee this thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I know like the Lord is speaking to me on like staying still and and it, <laughs> Literally, the moment that I become busy, I'm like, yeah. oh, I hear you. Okay, just, <laughs> I got to take care of that. Thing. <laughs> okay, wait, no, but if I don't do it, then, yeah. you know, so it's kind of like, and, which could honestly kind of still come back to, like, the attention piece. Mm, mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I think I, for me, it was just um, whenever I know I'm being, a, like, a sense of, like, fear is happening yeah. is how I'm able mm -hmm. to distinguish, like, the between, like, just being busy and, you know. That's really good. Yeah. You said you had a question. Only because you said, um, like, you didn't want to get it wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't want to get something wrong. Like, what does that look yeah. like? Serving. So, okay. So, ooh, this is what I think of. So, like, I remember when I was younger. Wow, why did that come up? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> uh, okay, so I remember when I was younger, um, I used to, I had this thing with, like, with my mom. And, and you know, it was like, it was Definitely, I think an unhealthy soul tie, but mm -hmm. we have a good one now. Mm -hmm. um, but I used to do this thing with my mom where I never wanted to see her like sad. Mm -hmm. And I, oh, from a young age, like, I was mm -hmm. always like this person that wanted to serve and make mm -hmm. people happy. Yeah. Um, an example of that in particular is if I make something for her, like mm -hmm. um, my fear is that hopefully you don't hate this mm -hmm. and I don't want to like disappoint you in that. So yeah. it's kind of like I will, you know, I'll try to do all the things to make sure that it's, you know, the right thing but it's like well my mom would just love if I just give yes. her a little flower yeah I don't have right. to like do all that yeah. I think that I need to do yeah um to make her happy yeah. um but yeah and I think I think that really speaks to like 
and you know used a, a parental relationship and obviously it makes me think of our relationship with God I think that's what keeps some of us from serving mm -hmm. is like we or like we or we talk about it um sometimes in this church I realize we don't talk about it often it's more of a whatever uh <laughs> this thing called risk over excellence right mm -hmm. and sometimes you have to take the risk in serving um and in whatever capacity that looks like for you and like understand that God will accept that, right? Like it doesn't, now this doesn't mean when do things slipshod, right? Like you yeah. wanna do like something that's terrible, but yeah. if it really is your best, um, yeah. God can build off of your best, right? Right, when it's yeah. truly, truly from a place of service. And so I think that's really good to, to yeah. like tell people like, still like keep on serving like keep trying like yeah. go for it um and even take risks and do things that you didn't think you would do to serve right like try something mm -hmm. different um because yeah. he'll accept that um if it's with the right heart yeah speaking of the right heart these transitions are really transitioning this week <laughs> how do you keep your heart involved in serving so that you are not doing it out of obligation how do you keep your heart in it so it's not just like a chore or Ugh, i have to do this like how do you keep that anybody can answer that I got something. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> I keep it, what I've been doing a lot lately now is asking the Lord like what he wants me to do uh, uh -huh. um, in, in every little thing. Uh -huh. So obviously like with, because I'm heavily, heavy in media, uh -huh. a lot of the times, and that is, a, it's a service to the online community, it's a service yeah. to even the people that we're working Absolutely. with. I always like try to be intentional and ask the Lord, okay, like, even like the small things like, all right, Lord, what color mm. should we use today? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, like what, what do your people need to see? What angles yeah. should we mm -hmm. go for? I like mm -hmm. try to be intentional about like just praying before doing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that that has helped me a lot to make sure that I was acknowledging him in literally every single thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I love that. That's good. Um, I would say, I guess the most quote unquote obvious answer would be to pray. Mm -hmm. um, before, like you said, before I go into anything, um, I also try to remember the need and put the need over my feelings, over mm -hmm. my emotions, mm -hmm. um, and really just think about the bigger picture. And no matter what it, no matter what it is, like there's nothing too small, there's nothing too big. Um, whatever I'm doing, like my service is a contribution, yeah. and not only for like the immediate, you know, the immediate need, mm -hmm. but in a like in a general scale. Yeah. So for me. I'm really intentional because it's so easy, especially in this day and age where um, there's just a lot to do, mm -hmm. like in general. Yeah. Um, and not only, I know we'll get to this, I don't want to get too no, yeah, forward, go. but like even service, like you serve in the four walls, but you also serve outside of the four walls. So I think if you're not careful at making sure that you're in a good space, like vertically, mm -hmm. like everything you do horizontally will take Mm -hmm. you know to will take a fall at some point yeah so i i also am just real with myself um and i say like okay i have to realize or i'm learning to realize when i'm doing something out of just a duty yeah and i realize mm -hmm. when i'm doing something just to do it out of just out of habit um just my fingerprint on it is different like mm -hmm. when i walk away from it it's different mm -hmm. i don't feel as um i would say spiritually satisfied not you know like yeah flesh satisfied mm -hmm. um so it takes a lot of honesty and all these questions are things i'm still it's a process yeah. um, because things pick up, you get more and more busy, there's mm -hmm. more and more things that need your attention. But when I remember like the need yeah. of the people, I always prioritize the need over my feelings and that um, helps me every time. Yeah, I think I, that was one of the things I was gonna say, the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the needs of people. But I also think for me, w one thing that I am sure to do um, is in the moment, Make sure I get mine. Um, like people, uh, like somebody said to me the other day, they wanted to teach us for Bible study. They were like, you know, I really applaud you because you used to do this every week by yourself. And I said, and, and I think people, it is difficult, right? But I, it, it's less difficult because I make sure that as I'm feeding, I'm eating. And so I'm making sure that while I'm preparing a lesson, I'm getting something for me as I'm teaching. Like I'm not cutting the window off. Like, okay, well, yeah. I studied. That's the only time you can speak to me. Like in the moment, like I'm allowing God to speak to me. And then even um, like how we're doing the in-person classes, like being able to hear the voices in the room and hear people's mm -hmm. experience and letting that minister to me as well, I think. Mm -hmm if you ever disengage from the moment, yeah. like mm -hmm. I think that's when your heart becomes disconnected mm -hmm. and you don't 
you're not able to grow as you serve, right? Yeah. Because I think one of the beautiful things about serving yeah. is that as we serve people, we grow, yeah. right? As yeah. we serve people, we are literally getting served yeah. by mm -hmm. God himself. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think if we miss that moment, I think that's when we can just start being like, all right, let me put this lesson together, child. It's another week doing that's this, it. right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And then it's like, who's having a good time when you doing that, right? And so mm -hmm. um, the work that we do, right, is, it's difficult, right? Like it's not, you know, easy and it is time consuming. So I would rather be fully engaged in what God is doing in that time mm -hmm. rather than just saying, I just had a long day, right? right. Like I would rather yeah. walk away from it and say, man, it was a long day, but man, I heard God speak. Yeah. Or man, yeah. I saw somebody get free or somebody said something to me that encouraged me. Um, so I think you just have to be really intentional about staying locked in, like yeah. keeping your heart engaged. Okay you know yeah um so i just have a few more questions um i'll give this to you tamika then brianna you can't answer how do you serve outside of your most obvious gift so when you are not oh. in the media world i'm not saying that that's your most obvious gift that's the one i'm going with as yeah. an example um how else do you serve well, I'm also a mother. Yes, you are. Wife. Yes, you are. Yes, I feel like those are the easy ones. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's all right. Okay, hey. Hey. Hello. <laughs> uh, yeah, I definitely, I, my family, I think yeah. that's, um, a, that's a big, big um, yeah. part of serving outside of ministry, outside of like um, media yeah. has definitely been my family and making sure that um, I was doing things even intentional with myself to make sure that I can show up with, for them, mm. um, which is also another level of sacrifice because it's yeah. like your your time, you yeah. know, um, and just making sure that I prioritize even something as small as like a meal, you know, yeah, yes. um, as busy as we are. So yeah. I think um, just considering them um, yeah. and how I could be a service to them, especially knowing that there there are certain things that they both literally look to me for. Mm. So it's like, okay, I gotta be, I gotta be prepared yes. and ready <laughs> at all times, you know? Um, yeah. So yeah. That's it. I love that. Um, okay. Okay. I don't know if this is getting to the next question. <laughs> okay, next question. But, um, okay, so I would say two things. I would say I serve, um, well, just in my profession, being a nurse. So every day I am serving people. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a perfect example of serving people that will not, you know, yeah. give you what you want. <laughs> They're going to do the opposite yeah. Um, yeah. of that. So I, do, I serve them daily. Um, just being expected to show up with compassion, gratitude. Um, again, that whole reciprocity thing, like mm -hmm. not going or doing to expect something back, but just knowing like you need this, so I'm gonna, you know, make sure that my heart is right, so I'm not doing it with yeah. a grudge or with anger mm -hmm. or anything like that, because I have been there too. Mm -hmm. um, and then secondly, I would say I serve um, just, I don't know why I thought about friendships. And mm -hmm. I think in this oh, season, good. like I'm serving a uh, form of my service includes stewardship. Mm -hmm. So just being mindful of my time, being mindful of how I treat myself yeah. so that I can show up as my best self for people. Mm -hmm. um, so in addition to that, like I'm serving myself. So I'm being more careful with um, my needs and not neglecting my needs. I think sometimes people could think like, oh, you're service, service, service. You have to forget about you yeah. or you don't have, to. you know, like because it's so selfless and it is, but there's still an aspect of you that you have to kind of nurture mm -hmm. so that you can show up for people. Yeah. So I think in this season, I th when she said mom and um, wife, I thought about just my friendships yeah. and cultivating um, myself and growing in the areas that I need to grow so that I can show up as my best self for Others. Yeah, I love that. I would say for me, um, I try, similar to what you were saying at the end of friendships, I try to make myself available for the people in my life, the things that they do outside of church. Um, mm -hmm. So if they have like a conference or a business or, you know, mm -hmm. um, I try my best, like my absolute best to, and I feel like that serves their whatever vision yeah. that they it's that they have or whatever mm -hmm. vision mm -hmm. the lord has given them yeah. um and so support serving them with prayer like actual support like don't don't ask for no discount right you know like all of those things <laughs> yes. with uh oh. that come with that and even like asking people within my community first for some of those needs right so if i have a media need i'm not gonna google it i'm gonna come to the people that have the things within the house right mm -hmm. because 
I believe that as we as we cater to one another in that way, right? Like that helps us grow, right? And so you serve my vision by maybe recording something for me, or if you need help with something teachy, like I serve you, right? And I think that's another way that we can like serve one another as yeah. a body, um, because the Bible does talk about it, and we talked about it in the lesson, um, to do good, especially to those in the household of faith, right? And so I think it's really important that we serve one another, not just corporately, but individually, yeah. when we know that people um, are in a certain type of industry or field, um, and the Lord is really using them in that area. I think it's important for us to serve yeah. there. Um, and so this is my last question. And I know it kind of sounds like the last one, um, but try to make it different if you can. Um, <laughs> my last question is I always like to do a, like, a similar question. How are you serving right now in your life? How are you serving others right now? Anybody can go first. <laughs> no, go ahead. Um, right now. I'm serving them by. Is this gonna sound bad? Because <laughs> <What is that? laughs> it's gonna make it seem like I wasn't doing it before. <laughs> no, I get you. it. Okay. Hey, okay. 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 if you wasn't, no judgment. No All judgment. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm serving others now by actually thinking of them. <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh. I get it. No, I get, no, it, I get that. No, that's good. Like I that's am good. trying to be like. There's this. There's this thing now that I'm even doing with the media team. Um, I was talking to my uh, assistant director, Shannon, about like, hey, let's get birthdays together. Mm. Like, let's mm -hmm. actually be intentional about no, finding out nice. when people's yes. birthdays are so that we can acknowledge them on yes. this day um, yes. and not let it just be a thing of like, oh, snap, your birthday was, you know, like yesterday, like, right. every, you know. Yeah. Um, it's something that I've actually felt even convicted about within like the last year. Where I was like, dang it, like I did not, I care about people, but clearly not enough to mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. write down when their birthdays are, right. you know, um, mm -hmm. as of late, you know, so yeah. I, it was something that was very um, important to me mm -hmm. this year to make sure, it, even if it was just a little thing, maybe I can't buy a gift right. or whatever, but I can at least have you on my mind and think about yeah. you. Um, yeah. Yeah, you may not get it, but I know why I'm doing yes, it. Um, yes. And I believe that it is a service to be able Absolutely. to do something like that. And I think it's a service before you go around. I think yeah. it's a service because sometimes people don't get that ever, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you go to work and don't know, you go work eight hours and nobody knew it was your birthday, you know, yeah. not a card, not a cupcake, not anything. And so mm -hmm. I think that's especially special for a church, right? To yeah. be like in the, the specific community in which you serve, to be like, we acknowledge you, right? Yeah. Um, we're going to serve you by, you know, acknowledging you and talking about how great you are and maybe things you need to improve on because that's good too. Um, yeah. So I love that answer. All right. So I think my answer is going to be very conjumbled. It's not a word, <laughs> but I'm going to try my best. So the first thing I thought of was how, how am I serving? I thought about my job. And we would need a whole other series to talk about my job <laughs> by itself. But that is an area where I'm tested the most. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I have realized that my service it looks different and what i mean by that is i'm more aware and i don't back down mm. so before whenever i met resistance my service is off mm. like you know what i'm saying like yeah oh, okay mm -hmm. it's not the day but <laughs> now i find myself like now that i see um i'm not just you know like just giving up because i think it's very easy to continue to do something for so long and when you keep getting the same result like there's a, a weariness there's a yeah. just you know what I, maybe I shouldn't do this anymore but I think serving because I am able to see needs that they can't see mm -hmm. um, and before my my attitude and my posture was a lot different like I would just say okay it's gonna stay like this it's not meant for me to do that mm -hmm. but the more I rely on God's strength and not in my own yeah. um, he continues to he says, just keep showing up, just mm. keep showing up. And mm -hmm. I noticed that in ministry also, right? Like it's very easy to see a need or to see something and think, okay, that's not me, hands mm -hmm. off. But I think service has, again, this selfish, selflessness and this like, like go, like, mm. okay, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna like push it to your, yeah, like I'm yeah. gonna keep going. Even if you don't receive it or accept it, mm -hmm. like I'm still gonna stand and serve you because I know what you're capable of. I know what Jesus would do. I know what the yeah. Bible says. Mm -hmm. So if I see a need um, that maybe you can't get to, even if you are resistant or I do feel that wall, mm -hmm. like to just, to push through it anyway. Yeah. So I think it's a lot, it has a lot to do with my heart posture mm -hmm. um, and the way that I show up. Yeah, um, same, so that's same, I, same, so. same. I would say that I am serving the 
I'll speak very specifically, the teachers of Fresh Start in a way that I don't think I've ever done before, in a way that I've never really been challenged to do before. Well, I probably was, but I just was like, eh, that's <laughs> not right now, not right now. <laughs> um, and so I, I, as my, not my literal role is shifting, but like my role in my head and in God's view as that's changing, um, I want to be more available to be a resource and not like, a source and I'm not saying like I'm above God but um, just sharing what what God has given to me and like opening you know stuff up so that um, people under like people understand their place and so I'm excited to be able to like serve them in that way and also I know that I'll be served right like when I when I tap into that um, so any last words we're about to get out of here any last words keep on serving if you have it Right. What? Um, even for like, I know we talked about like the need a lot. And we kept saying like, meet the need, the mm -hmm. need, the need, the need. And like, I just want to encourage someone who may not know someone's need. Mm. The Bible, like, mm. really staying grounded in the Word of God, you will see so many needs and how Jesus met specific ones. So mm -hmm. if you say like, oh, or maybe someone's not as open with yeah. you, like I need this, um, just just keep showing up. Yeah, like, keep. You know, don't, I don't want to say give up on people, but try not to focus so much on, okay, well, you have a need, I need to find it, because then it's like, yeah. all right, like, it's not investigated, it's not, mm -hmm. not that. Um, but the Bible has plenty of needs. Um, Jesus talks about, you know, just, just his character, his nature, and who he was, yeah. um, and meeting people's you know what they actually need in a moment and that could be physically that could be emotionally mm -hmm. that's very that it's a very broad range so i just wanted to speak to somebody that yeah. may not know people's needs or may mm -hmm. not know where to start in serving yeah. like yeah. i don't know if you guys have like how can someone start serving if they don't have a role they don't have a title mm -hmm. they don't i would say ask I literally was going to say that. <laughs> Hello? You better ask somebody. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, I definitely would say to ask. I think if sometimes if you're waiting for the invitation to serve, um, people may not know what you do well. Because I think, right, like, and we can get practical, right? You, you're in media because you're skilled in that area. And I, I think you went to school for that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you went to school to be in right? Like, there's certain things that, like, you just have skill for. Um, and so everybody, you know, you don't come to church with your resume. Uh, <laughs> um, so, you know, we don't really know what you do well, um, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I would start there. But then I would also, I would say, literally start anywhere right like start like now you may not start on a praise team or like be the pastor but like start like or be a usher like you know and you you may find from there like okay maybe this isn't for me like try something else right mm -hmm. like i would say don't be afraid to try new things um because in that way you discover and you like find like what you should be and where you should be and so i would say keep trying until until you strike goal we didn't arrive where we are Absolutely overnight right. it took years and, and praying and leadership right and also I would also say be open to people to be able to say hey I see this in you hey I see that in you I tell the story often I didn't start teaching like this until I got an email from the apostle that said you're going to teach on Sunday and I was like oh wow <laughs> um and that was it right like he told me and then from there like I figured out that this was like my spiritual gift and what I was supposed to do and so I would say be open to people be open to wise counsel and leadership also and that can help you as well I'm not gave a list I don't know no, if you have any no it's okay <laughs> <laughs> you, you said it I was going to say well just ask and you said and ask but um I do have just a little a little yeah, smidgen yeah. I think if you're the person in the other on the other side, mm -hmm. I would say not to be afraid to give information. Because mm. um, sometimes, like, I literally thought about, like, wait waitresses. Like, they, they are giving us a service. They're our yeah. servers. Um, and they literally tell you what's available. Yes, and the, that's they so go good. through the actual menu. Good. So I think that being the person on the other side, like, yeah. as a server, right, yeah. you can give people information yeah. um, and speak to maybe their needs. They, they've come to our church for a thing. Yeah. Um, so clearly they're they're looking for something. And yeah. I've been, hello, we hope that that's the Lord. Yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> yes. look for, for Jesus and the gospel. Um, yeah. So mm -hmm. I think that just to always be prepared and ready to um, give the information that might be needed. Yeah, I love that. And, and with that too you have to like know what you need right yes. like you right. so I think it's always important to take an assessment and like okay what? we hope you enjoyed this conversation we hope that you were answering and you were engaged in the chat as well uh, we pray that you have a servant's heart if you don't have it 
you can ask for it um, and the Lord will give you opportunities to serve other people. And so we're always praying for you. Uh, we hope that you are enjoying this series. Um, we hope that you come back next week to hear what we're talking about. Um, so we will see you all next week.